Have you ever had an instance where you were like, I don't know if this is for me? Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> I never. Hey, yo, ease. I know you're coming back from an injury, right? Like you, you missed all last yeah. year, man. I know you one of the kings of preparation, even <laughs> as a young boy, man. Like you've always yeah. been focused. So tell me about that journey, like coming back from injury. Oh, it was injury. crazy, man. Uh, first, it happened the first day of practice last season, so that was obviously a bummer. I was in, I was training all summer, getting ready. So like, just to have that happen, it like messed me up mentally because um, I was getting, I was supposed to be number one, supposed to be my year to win it, and uh, it all got taken from me first day of practice. So obviously mentally, I wasn't like that hit me right away. So I was like mentally, I wasn't there. I was uh, actually down bad, pretty bad. Um, my mom had to come out. And then I have to get a lot of support. I have to go see like a psychic, not a psychic, but like a sports psychologist, you know, yeah. to get my mental game back. And um, yeah, I got some people supporting me from outside of the wrestling room. So that made a, things a lot easier. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. And then after that, once I got cleared for uh, PT, started doing some PT training. That was awesome. I actually got back really fast. Um, I got cleared like and half the time I was supposed to so but obviously it was like halfway through the season already and my coach was like we're gonna take the year off just come back next year so I was like all right that's the plan that's the plan that's what we're gonna do so right now I'm feeling a lot better for like 100 percent no restrictions when I'm wrestling so yeah we ready yeah man that, that's what's up and because it's kind of like listening to you talk is layered right like you have like you have to have people to talk to and support you yeah. and it's the mental grind too so what was the hardest part about the recovery, like coming back, knowing who you were and trying to get back there. What was the toughest part of it? Um, I would say just belief, you know, a torn peck is just like, that's pretty hard to come back from. Everyone that was like supporting me, they was like still like, yo, this is a hard injury to come back from. So just like getting over that, that aspect is like knowing I could be the same person I was, but even better. That's what uh, the sports psychologist was putting in my head a lot. So just like, that as well and then i started this thing called like functional patterns and that just changed a lot man uh, my posture i learned my posture by my posture my posture was all bad like i was like an old man kind of like my body was just twisted all my muscles were just like so super tight and they said the injury could happen again so starting fp that like opened my mind to like different aspects of training and lifting wise so that helped a lot and um yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so pretty much, all right, so you, you switched up your training regimen. So mm -hmm. compared to what you were doing before and now, what is your daily routine? Like, what does it look like? So I do a little less of the lifting, like power lifting, mm -hmm. and I do more of like functional mobility training. And uh, it's pretty hard. Um, it's hard to explain, you know, because um, it's kind of like you're still lifting, but you're connecting, connecting your upper body to the lower body at the same time. So it's like, I'm not just one day doing upper body, the next day doing lower body. Every workout is just a whole body connecting at once, you know? Mm. But um, my daily schedule is just wake up, go for my walk with my dog, like I just was doing. Always get some sun in the morning. Um, then I go straight to a lift where I do some of the lifting, but not too much of the power lifting, just cause my shoulder. And then, uh, then I do FP training right after lifting. And that's where I do most of my stuff get most of my training with the FP and then 3 30 in the afternoon I would go wrestle then depending on how I'm feeling I'll do a run at night you know always got to do the running wow so this is a, this is like a lifestyle and it's just it's not just about yeah. three or four hours per day training for wrestling like it starts from nah, the very nah. beginning mm -hmm. training the way you eat the decisions you make I used to eat junk all the time man yeah. but like I realized what you put in your body really affects you so actually being really clean now yeah so speak on that like because there's some athletes out there or even just people who just lifelong learners of uh yeah. nutrition <laughs> yeah what is the major differences between i don't know eating snacks all the time or mm -hmm. having a, a diet low in carbs and mm -hmm. high in protein like what yeah. is the major difference everybody, everybody not chat out to a cinco man everybody just can't <laughs> go eat mcdonald's before games <laughs> yeah 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 um after me i feel like eating clean i have more energy throughout the day and uh, more energy during practice, which is needed to burn all the weight off, you know? So um, I feel like I drink a lot of water. I pound like two gallons a day now. I was only drinking about half a gallon 
before I started, and then now I, I fit two, maybe even three, if I could get enough training in, but two gallons a day, and then I eat like a lot of fruit during the morning. I even like eat breakfast right away. I eat, drink water, eat a lot of fruit in the morning. And I feel like just doing that gives me so much energy during practice to like burn off. And then I'll come back from practice, then I'll have my breakfast. I gotta probably cook some eggs and then like chicken for lunch right before practice. Not a lot of carbs. And then after my last workout is where I put a lot of carbs in with a protein and some greens. Now, how do you ultimately come to these decisions, right? Because obviously we got like short-term goals and long-term goals. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What you've been doing, how do you come to the ultimate decision? Like, how do you know what you should eat? Do you sit down with a nutritionist? Is it because of your past injuries? You just wanted to try something different? Like, do you have a yeah. whole team of people or you just mm -hmm. research on your own? Um, Actually, yeah, the team has a nutritionist. So she's very helpful, Melanie. Shout out Melanie, she's a very good nutritionist. Um, We have like a point system and it's like, how much points you should have during the day, like carbs, protein, and all these points have to add up by the end of the day. So that's a nice system that we have. But how I came to this decision, it was just like, I've been doing this stuff for so long, eating, not eating right, not doing a lot of training right. So I'm just like, something gotta change, right? Cause I'm, I'm there, I'm, not, I'm there, like in my results, like I'm all American, but like, how do I get to that? national champion how do i get to that world champion spot like something got to change you just can't keep doing the same thing if you're not getting that championship result you know so i was like mm -hmm. something got to change so i just was like all right i gotta change my eating gotta change my habits outside of the rest of the room and i gotta train my i have to have like a goal for each practice like short-term goals so obviously i want to be a national champion and a world champion but what can i do today that can help me push me towards that goal you know mm -hmm. that, that that's a great answer man lifestyle wow so when you speak about your success and your goals what role does your environment or your team or the people around you play because you mentioned oh. uh your nutritionist melanie or probably your head yeah. coach or even your teammates mm -hmm. what role do they play like what do you look for in those specific individuals on so a daily now, basis yeah, yeah so now i mean growing up i was always looking up to older wrestlers you know but now i'm like i'm like the old head you know <laughs> i'm like my fifth year here so like I got to set the example. So like, just like putting the right things in your body over the weekend, you know how things go. And like, especially out here, there's a lot of distractions. We call them, we call them distractions on the weekends, but just like settling down, not chasing girls all the time. I settled down, got a girlfriend, you know, mm. uh, not partying on the weekends, just staying tunnel vision towards my goal and like not having any distractions. Okay. Yeah. That's, so when we speak about distractions, I know we're going, we, we're asking the same questions in many different ways because many people out here can learn from this. So yeah. choosing the right people to be around. Yeah, for sure. How, how has that helped you academically and mm -hmm. wrestling? Because we are what we hang around in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what mm -hmm. role has that played with the people? It played around? a big role. Um, I met someone last year, uh, shout out Dan Sager. He, um, like, he got me, like, into, like, the business aspect of the world, you know? How to live life, how to think right. Um, so just him, him alone, he just, like, uh, put me somewhere else because I couldn't be on the mat at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So this is my first, that was my first year, like, not even on the mat at all. So and that was the first time it never happened. So, like, all throughout my life, I've been wrestling, 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 all season long. And then it got taken away from me. I'm just, like... Dang, what do I do now? You know, so um, started reading, started learning just through reading. You know, I, I was never a reader. You know, I hate reading, but like he opened my mind to reading, and I'm just like surrounding my people by like surrounding myself with people that like have an open mind and set goals for themselves daily and not never satisfied. But, like people like that helps you helps you like want to reach new levels and new goals in life outside of wrestling and in wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So getting hurt and injured and coming back from that, do you think in hindsight that you kind of lost a sense of identity? Like you, Ja'Cory oh. Tima was just a wrestler, but now you consider yourself to be a well-rounded young man. Oh, yes. Speak oh, on yes. that. That was, that was, that was really big for me. Um, Cause I was lost. I was, I was crying. I was like, yo, what am I, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I just can't sit here, you know, mm. and just do recovery all day. So I was just like, I met him and I did a lot of re reading 
then I started getting closer with God, you know, because I wasn't really going to church. I would go to church sometimes, but like now it's like, I got to get to church, you know, yeah. so I get a little spiritual too. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Wow. It changed a lot. It yeah. changed a lot, for sure. Did you, well, did your focus shift in a bit? Well, in some ways, academically as well. Like, yeah. how, how did that go? Would you, because you still have to be a student athlete, right? So yeah, even yeah. if you can't wrestle, you still have to stay sharp mentally with regards to wrestling, but you still mm-hmm. have to go to class as well, right? Yeah. So if your yeah. identity is tied to wrestling, it mm-hmm. could kind of like play a major role in other things as well. Like, that may kind of like maybe a deficit yeah. educationally. So, how does that yeah, work? Um, how do you stay focused? So, like, um, Obviously, I wasn't really I wasn't focused on my education. Even when I got to college, I didn't know what I wanted to uh, uh, major in. And then I wanted to do business real estate. And then freshman year came around and the workload just hit me. And like, I had to change my major right away. And then um, I didn't know what to do after this uh, business real estate. So I was majoring in uh, liberal arts. It was like all around stuff. And then uh, I was, I couldn't wrestle and I had time to actually focus on what I want to do. And then now I got my mind made up. Obviously, I want to be in the, on the business side too, but um, I'm starting my master's next semester in uh, sports management. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, he's starting his master's, so you've already yeah. been your undergrad, right? That, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. focus, man. That's wow. So can you talk about, going back to the wrestling, Matt, the, the importance of like mental toughness? Because you exhibit a mental toughness coming back from the injury. So mm-hmm. once you're on the mat, how does that work? Um, I mean, college wrestling is hard. I mean, ever since I've been got to college wrestling, like every single match is like everyone's tough, you know? Mm-hmm. Everyone's tough. So um, just knowing that I'm the man, like in my head, like I'm him, like I'm a teamer. You already know how that go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's right. We don't like losing. So I like to enforce my will on people, even though how good no matter how good they are. Um but yeah, I just know that my training, you can't be mentally tough. You can still have mental toughness, but you can't be as mental tough if your training isn't right, you know? Mm-hmm. If you know you've been skipping out on practices, not putting in extra work, you're obviously gonna go in there with some questions, right? So I think my training has like built this mental confidence that like my training is the best, so I'm gonna wrestle at my best. So I feel really good going in physically and mentally. I feel like I'm. I should be number one, and uh, I'm gonna prove that this year. Yeah, I believe you will, man. So, what's the prefer- preparation like when you're wrestling someone that you're well aware of, or mm-hmm. someone who may be up and coming? Is it the same mental um, process, or do you find yourself as an athlete you may take a day off because that, no one is perfect? So, how yeah. do you stay in that position where no matter if you're ranked number one or you aren't ranked, you get in the business? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the newcomers they gotta. I gotta enforce my will a little bit more, you know. They they hungry just as so like the old heads, you know. Um, I actually got an all star match against the number one in the country, who was actually only a sophomore, and I'm the senior, you know. So um, wow. just going in, I'm just gonna show them like I'm the big dog. <laughs> you still, still a little, you still a little pup, you know. But, um, I just go in with confidence, or every single match, I take every match the same. Um, I don't like downgrade people like i go in there everyone's getting the same work you know i'm going out there on point doing what i do and i don't sleep on no one and that's why you're successful man that's exactly why you're in this position man so you mentioned that you have an all-star match coming up where's that um individual what school does he go to oh he goes to penn state and the all-star duel is at penn state (laughs) so really yeah yeah it's gonna be hopefully he's still number one Hopefully, I'm still where I'm at or I jump. I think I'm like four or five, but it's pretty early in the season. So he still might be number one. I still might be in the top five. So it should be a big duel, big big match. What, what is your goal for yeah. the entire season? We all know that you probably want to yeah. go undefeated. Those are like simple things. Yeah. But like, what are your smart mm-hmm. goals? Like specific, like measurable, mm-hmm. like exactly what do you want to do at this mm-hmm. given moment? So I, I was... This is another thing that I was reading about in the book. Um, you gotta like, you can't think ahead too long, you know? Obviously I wanna be a national champ. Obviously I wanna be a world champ, but like, you gotta take it. Uh, so I'm taking it match by match. So the first match I have is uh, November 4th is uh, wrestle offs. So I gotta wrestle one of my teammates. 
I'm literally eyeing in on that duel. Like I'm eyeing in who I might have and I'm just looking straight at that. Then we'll take it on from there on. But um, shortening my goals, you know? Obviously I got the wall, but like, what can I do to be at the best on November 4th instead of March, you know? It's an accumulation, right? Like step yeah. by step, right? You can build a brick by brick. How do you maintain not being the best on the mat in a sense of rankings? Like mm -hmm. mentally, because you know that you're the best. You feel that the, the preparation mm -hmm. puts you there. But yeah. when other individuals may not feel that way or or things may not go your way, how do you bounce back from that? Mm -hmm. Um, just saying short minded, you know. Obviously you gotta go back to work, put the work in, you know. Obviously, I'll say I I'm not the best right now. Or say I am. I gotta I can't think like I'm the best. I don't have to work at anything. Like I'm the best, I don't have to work at nothing. There's always room for improvement, you know? So through video, I've been videotaping my matches, just looking at my matches every time, seeing what I could work on, looking at other people's matches and what they do from overseas. I like watching like overseas wrestlers, not a lot of USA wrestlers. I feel like their technique is just so different and so like affected. So I watch a lot of film and just keep getting better. Wow. What's the greatest attribute that you've uh, encountered or I would say just gained over your career as a wrestler like just the different resources like what's the most mm -hmm. memorable thing or piece of advice oh hmm. i think uh my pace and matches i feel like no one's seen it yet but like from because i took the year off but i was working at uh changing my pace because like obviously i'm a very defensive wrestler okay. i'm a very defensive wrestler but my, my coach lee pritt said if you can go for it the whole time and make them take the shots and keep scoring off them, then the, the point gap will spread tremendously. Because I just wait on people. I never go for it. They shoot, then I score. Or they might not even shoot because the coach tell them, like, he's going to tire out in the third. Just don't shoot until the third period, right? So now uh, my goal is to push the pace, take my shots, score my shots. And as I'm pushing the pace, let them take a shot and score while I'm still pushing the pace. And I feel like that and believing in my conditioning is going to change a lot this year. It's going to change now, a lot. Is that approach for every different match? Wait, every single match, I should say? Or is every, it different from each? Every opponent? match. Every yeah. match is the same. Every match will be the same. Um, I never game plan. That's another thing. Wow. I never game plan for somebody. I feel like game planning takes away your identity. So if someone told me like, oh, this guy, you gotta watch his single leg. He has a great single leg. I'm gonna be thinking about his single leg the whole match, you know, instead of thinking about what I should be doing. So I don't have a game plan. I just go in there and wrestle. Like I'm a gamer, is what they said. Wow. No. Now, that piece of advice that you just gave, well, your, your strategy, never game planning. Did you think most wrestlers could do that? Or is that just your physical, well, your natural ability that allows you to do that? That you can kind of like adapt to any environment? Hmm. Or, I, feel like, you, I feel like it's me. A lot. I feel like a lot of it is me, but uh, I think most people game plan for sure. Like at nationals, uh, our coaches was game planning the whole time and like trying to tell me. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Like, mm. just let me right. I got it. <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I just don't like hearing about it because uh, I feel like it would just freeze me up. That's just me. That's just me though. But, but you prepare like, in different ways though, so it's yeah, not yeah. In different ways. You know, I I know my abilities can like mess up their game plan, whatever they have. So that's whatever. Wow. I, just, I'm like, I call it a gamer. They call me a gamer. Cause like, I just go in there without any strategy and nothing. Just see what happens. And I always come in on top. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. So outside of your injury, right? Would, could you name anything that has ever, for lack of a better term, tested your dedication for the sport? Outside of getting hurt, have you ever had an instance where you were like, I don't know if this is for me. Never, <laughs> never, <laughs> I never, because like I always had great seasons uh, every time and, and then lean up to the summer where we transitioned to freestyle, I always had a great season then like make either making a world team or like coming close to making a world team. So like I never like fell off yet, I feel like so um, the results have been there. I just got to make some tweaks just to jump up a few slots. So. Um, Dedication's still there. 
and I still think I have what it takes to become a world Olympic champion. Most definitely, man. Mm -hmm. So as a student athlete, mm -hmm. um, could you describe like your maturation process? We spoke on some things, but like year to year, like has things mm -hmm. been harder or did you feel like you oh things got easier? easier. Okay, yeah. Things definitely get easier for freshman. If you want this, trust me, freshman year might be your worst year. <laughs> uh my GPA ever since my freshman year has been going up. Um I feel like you take things more seriously and you you mature more, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I matured since I got here a lot and uh I actually focus in on my schoolwork and it's easier to because like I have study hall hours, you get to study hall hours here. We also have a plan. We have like a team GPA we have to meet. And if you're the one messing up the team GPA, you're going to hear it from the coaches. So um, so we get study hall hours each week. And uh, if you're not doing your work, obviously the study hall hours want to increase. And if you're doing your work outside of it, you don't even have to come. So I'm at that point where I don't have any study hall hours. I could just do it all on my own. And uh, yeah, it's just maturing. Maturing as a person just helps you focusing on the things that's important in life. Wow. Mm -hmm. now, so I'm gonna pick it back on the fuck that answer. Like what mm -hmm. advice would you give an aspiring athlete? Because obviously you wrestle, mm -hmm. but you've done many different things yeah. that are making a decision about their collegiate career, where they're going and what they want to do. Like what would be the mm -hmm. first piece of advice to a high school senior at this given moment from your experience? Uh, uh, make sure that you're in an environment that you like. Make sure like no one's peer pressuring you to where you want to go. Um, make sure your decision is clear and that you really want this for yourself. And then um, while, while you're there, I feel like just like knowing your priorities, like keeping your priorities in check, you know, you got your family, you got school, you got sports, you know, I feel like knowing your priorities and not chasing anything outside of your goals will be is very important. Um, so yeah, priorities, dedication, and this effort, you know, you got to try, you got to want it. If you don't, if you don't try, then you're not going to get the results you want. Wow. So just pushing out the distractions, knowing your priorities and like being consistent with your work. It's like the best advice I could give. It's great advice, man. And you mentioned your family in there as well. Could you please like speak on the role a pivotal role your parents have played we'll start with your mom like from, from, from the very beginning let's talk about your wrestling career and like this the love that she's just poured into you up oh, until yeah. this given moment man like yeah what role has your mom played in so your it career? was like so since my whole career it was like my mom focuses on school my dad focuses on sports you know my dad's one taking me around driving me around in sports and stuff my mom was just do you, do you do your homework me some grades <laughs> but um yeah now nah, i love my mom i'm a mama's boy uh she plays a tremendous role in my life uh just like pushing me in education like she was like she she was the one that was trying to tell me early on like you better find out what you major in it you better find out what you major in it i'm just like i'm just so focused on wrestling but, like she was the, she was always there academically and she would obviously show up to the matches as well but she was the one that came and comforted me when I uh, tore my pec. So she was here, that played a big role. I feel like if she wasn't here, I would probably been even more down bad. But um, yeah, I love, shout out my mom. I love shout her. My dukes, yeah. yeah she, made, she makes me, uh, she pushes me hard in the uh, academic room. Mm. And yeah, I love her. Man. And my so dad. He, he had and my, dad. Yeah, my dad, he the one uh, that got me here. I feel like, I feel like if it wasn't for him, I definitely wouldn't be this far in my career. Um, he just put this in my head to never be complacent. I just remember this story. Uh, I was just won my first varsity tournament, right? And he woke me up the next morning was just like, that felt good, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, so what's the goal for the year? And I was like, I'm gonna be a county champ. And then uh, he was like, what? That's it? And I was like, yeah. I was like, that's good, right? He was like, now we're taking over the state. Now we're taking over the state. We're taking over the country. Now we're taking over the country. We're taking over the world. Now just like, obviously I didn't believe in myself, but obviously he believed in me. So that right there, just like, like whoa. And then like that year, I won counties. Then I won states. And then uh, obviously 
I won states and then um, I didn't go to any nationals because I was only in eighth grade that year. I didn't do any high school nationals, but I went on to, to, to win nationals over the years and took third in the world. So just not being complacent and always looking to push push my goals further and further out. Wow. So, and my dad for that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Also with family, right? We have an array of different family members, right? Oh, Everyone yeah. plays their own role. Yeah, you know that. But yeah. we spoke about, well, I asked you about a high schooler making a decision of mm -hmm. going to college or where they should go and how they should go about making it. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, what role did having a sibling travel with you to mm -hmm. school? How, how oh, did yeah. that help you? Because that's oh, kind of an advantage. Most people don't have that. Oh, yeah. Um. So that how that came about is like my brother Jordan, uh, second oldest brother. He uh, came and visited me my freshman year. And just like him, just like, just how I com came here, I came off the plane, I already knew I was coming here. As soon as I touched down, I was like, I'm coming here, this is, this is no joke, I'm coming here. So as soon as he got here, he was like, yo, I'm coming here. I was like, no you're not, bro, like, shut up. He was like, nah, I'm gonna move here. I was like, you're, you're capping, I was like, you're playing. Then like literally later that month, like a couple months out, he saved some money up. And he moved down. I was like, wow, he wasn't joking. So just having Jordan here was like, is great. He's always at all the duels. I and mean, I've been living with him ever since. Um, wow. And just having that big brother, just like, he's like a dad to me kind of out here. But he's he always keeps me in check too. But um, I just love him out here. He always supporting me. You know, he got his own business going. And uh, yeah, I just thank him for his support. You know, you know, he come cook some meals up. You know, Jordan's chef. He a chef, man. I can't cook. I can't cook at all. So, you know, he puts it down on the grill. Um, yeah, just having that family out here, I just need that support, and he's giving it for sure. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to you talk, man, and I can understand why you're so great at what you do because you're willing to learn. Mm -hmm. Like even someone outside of what you do, you you are able to like kind of pick different things, elements, and apply mm -hmm. it to your own life, man. And that's mm -hmm. That's a testament to your greatness, man. So you spoke about your degree in sports management, right? Mm -hmm. So we're taking like, we'll go down the road. Not too mm -hmm. far, but 10 years from now, what do you see yourself doing after you've garnered all the success in wrestling? Mm -hmm. What's the goal? So my goal is definitely, I want to still be in a wrestling area, you know? So I want to have my own gym, my own wrestling club, maybe out here or somewhere back home. And then I could possibly be uh, athletic director at a, I want to be out of college, not a high school. I definitely want to be at a athletic director at a, or athletic director at a college. So being athletic director at a college and owning my own gym is where I want to do. And at this given moment, do you like train? Because in the off season, you kind of help out in different gyms, correct? Like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. I'm always around doing camps, always like moving around different states, just running camps for kids. Yeah, that's my summers. And then obviously I have freestyle, but obviously I wasn't wrestling freestyle last summer to get ready for Worlds because I was hurt. But so I was doing a lot of camps. But other than doing my freestyle training, I'm um, running camps for kids. And how has giving back to others helped you along the way? Oh, it's, it's always been great. Um, just giving me more followers as well, my brand. It's like getting out there to a lot of kids know me. And I feel like just that alone helps a lot on my image, you know? And I just love giving back to the kids. I love teaching. Like sometimes I wouldn't even like uh, charge the gym I would go to. I just do it for free just because I like, and like teaching, like teaching wrestling also helps me learn in a way. So I feel like, I feel like that alone just like is something I need. So just giving back always, always helps me too. So not just the kids. So I just love doing it. Wow. So in your, yeah. in your off time, right? Because you're much more than the rest, like we stated before. Oh, yeah. What brings you peace or keeps you at ease? Because you, you know, mm -hmm. you have a tight schedule. You're very structured. Yeah, yeah. Have a singular yeah, yeah. focus. Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy doing outside of outside of wrestling? I'm, I'm literally just either doing some like I'll hike with my dog, uh, my my girl. I do a lot of hiking. There's a lot of outdoor stuff out here. Uh, I like hiking. Um, Obviously, music right now. <laughs> Always on the music. Um, and then uh, that's about it. I don't really do much because I only get the weekends, to be honest. 
only get the weekends off. So on my weekends, I'm just like either outdoors, playing ball still, just chilling by the pool, getting some sun. That's about it. I'm not, I don't really do too much. Simple oh, life, man. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, simple, simple things, right? Simple. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I'm either watching, watching some sports. You know, I'm a big sports guy, so either watching some sports. I actually started getting into other sports that I wouldn't even think of. Like, I'll be watching tennis. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know, just, just the competition. Like, I never watched it. And I, I, I seen, like, the U.S. Open was on. I was like, watching. Like, yo, this is competitive. Like, it's a one-on-one sport, too. And I'm just like, yo, the competitive mindset of these people, they got to be crazy. Because they playing for, like, six hours. Six hours nonstop. I'm just like, yo, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, you really got to have enough toughness to play this game. Like, this is crazy. So, yeah, just watching a lot of sports, being outdoors, or like playing basketball at the rec or something. That's all I do. Do you ever take a moment to kind of reflect on all the high expectations that have been on you since you were a young child? And, oh, you yeah, were, and how you were able to um, just get to this point? Because it wasn't an easy task, man. Like, mm-hmm. I got to commend you to mm-hmm. be able to meet those expectations and still yeah. be present. Like, mm-hmm. you, you deserve all the ovations in the world. So, <laughs> you. reflect on that? Um. Yeah, definitely when I was hurt, I did a lot of reflecting on, like, on what I achieved already and, like, is it enough? And obviously it's not enough, but um, I do a lot of reflecting. Uh, I did a lot of reflecting, but now that I'm here, I don't do as much reflecting because I'm obviously not where I want to be. And I don't want to get satisfied, just like my dad said. So um, I do a lot of meditation, though. That's what my morning is about. My morning is, like, where I meditate. I do a lot of visualization. So my mornings is very important for me. That's why I'm, I'm it's eight o'clock, but I was up like six, five o'clock. I'm always up early. Yes, I'm an early riser, man. I'm an early riser, get some sun, walk, walk my dog, listen to nature, do my meditation. And that's it. I think that helps a lot. Now you mentioned that you got into reading, right? Um, yeah. What would be a book that you would highlight that has uh played a pivotal role in, in your life or even someone like a mentor some advice that you've gotten yeah, yeah. in like um, the last two years or so definitely my mentor dan sager he helped me a lot and um this is a book by trevor moad um why can i think of the name uh this is the last book i read actually hold up i'll give you the name of it get into neutral get into neutral okay get into neutral you should definitely read it uh it's a lot of sports. It's about sports, sports psychology, kind of. It was like the, he was a mentor, Trevor Moad. He was a mentor to like Russell Wilson, um, actually the tennis player uh, Victoria Azarenka, who was number one in the world at, at the time. And um, that book just like it's called Get Into Neutral. It's like a neutral way of thinking. It's about um, how you should go on and think about life, not have any false positives. Um, and how to prepare to reach your goals, pretty much, is how it's about. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a very good book. I recommend it to well, any athlete or just people in life, because it's definitely a good book on both aspects. Their author, he had a uh, cancer, and obviously he was like, "I'm going to beat this cancer," but he was like, "How do I actually beat this cancer? Like step by step. Like what do I need to do?" Like, what do I need to round me? What treatment I have to do? I'm like, all this has to go into it. And I'm just like, it's a very eye-opening book for sure. That's fine. Man. On how to think on life. Get into neutral though. By yes, yes, man. Check that book out, ladies and gentlemen. Motivation. Motivation. When you go to any match, you just mentioned you have an all-star match coming up. Mm-hmm. What is the major motivation? Is it your goals? Are you... Is it about representing your school? Is it about mm-hmm. your family? Like, how do you deal with all of that? Like the pressure that comes with it? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it all ties in, all ties into it, like all in one. So obviously I'm a teamer, so I'm representing them. I'm obviously from Long Beach, I'm representing my city. Mm-hmm. I'm obviously representing ASU, so I'm doing it for my school. And then obviously myself, I have to put on for myself, you know, get my, get my name out there. As well as, my, as well as my family. Um, it's like, it doesn't really put any pressure on me because I know the other guy's probably thinking that too. He's probably, he obviously, he obviously is representing a lot of things too. So 
I feel like just being the best and getting to that national champion and world champion spot will just help me and my family and put my city on the map even more. So what is the greatest lesson that you've learned in your collegiate career? The greatest lesson? Ooh. That everything won't go your way. Um, I feel like the last time I competed two years ago, I put a lot into it. Like I did everything. Um, like I trained well. I, my preparation was excellent. I wasn't being distracted, being distracted outside the wrestling room. And it was actually, I was undefeated all year. And then I got to the semis and a questionable call was made. And uh, I just lost it from there on. I lost the match and then went on to lose my next two matches and end up going from the semi-finalist to taking sixth place. So um, everything won't go your way. And you gotta be short-minded in this game to obviously get better results, you know? After I lost, my first loss of the season, I didn't bounce back well. So I was like, you gotta have a short mind and like have a short, quick around, change around uh, to get better results when you lose. But um, other than that, just like, yeah, everything won't go your way. Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep fighting until it does. Now, if everything won't go your way, which it won't, from your perspective, what gets you through? Has it been, would you say, in a match, will it be your physical ability or your composure? And if it is composure, huh. what tactics or techniques have you practiced or studied to kind of like hone in on that? Yeah, that's, I actually been looking at that. Um, Cause like, obviously I had a mental breakdown during that match. I was just like, I'm in a spot where I never been. I was losing, I was like, what's going on? Um, so I was watching Jordan Burroughs. He actually uh, has this tactic. He like takes a little break. So in the match, he has a little recheck. He does, he like, he goes down, fixes his sock, then he pops back up. He's like, all right, let's go back into it. And I feel like just having like a quick turnaround, not like letting things dwell up in a match, all the stress. I feel like having a short mind and having like a switch, like, okay, it's not going my way, but I can still win this match. And I feel like, just having that switch, like, all right, time to go. I, this happened, it didn't go my way, but all right, cool. I still have five minutes left in the match to change it, you know, and not dwell on it. And just, because if you keep dwelling on it, you're just going to make up an excuse and you're not going to wrestle the whole match. So I feel like, I feel like that is going to change a lot. And ladies and gentlemen, that's not exclusive to wrestling either. Like, if you're taking a test, studying, writing a paper, Composures everything, yeah. right? Sometimes you need to step away for 20 minutes if you're yeah. studying to get right back to it, man. Yeah. So physically, obviously, you're coming back, right? You took some time off. You're excited mm -hmm. about the, the upcoming All-Star Duel. Oh, yeah. When the match is over, outside of winning, mm -hmm. what are you looking forward to? Ooh. So like right when the match is over. But when it's over, so, because obviously it's obviously. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's at record for this so, moment, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, I'm looking. I'm not even looking forward to the opponent. I'm just looking forward to uh, the arena. So Rec Hall is like one of the biggest arena to wrestle in as a wrestler. Like people dream of wrestling there. Obviously, if you go to Penn State, you wrestle there all the time. But I never want to go to Penn State to wrestle for Penn State. I always wanted to beat them. That arena is crazy. It's crazy and. Uh, we, my freshman year when I redshirted, we went there, but I obviously didn't wrestle because I was redshirting and it was electrifying. Like we was getting killed. We only won one match. We won the first match and then lost every match from there on out. And the crowd, probably the craziest crowd I heard, like even better than the NCAA semifinals crowd. So, and they get disrespectful, they get rowdy. So I'm just looking forward to going in there and I got something for them after I went. <laughs> I can't wait to get in there. I can't wait to get in there. It's going to yeah, be yeah. fun. It's going to be a fun time. Wow. So you, you said I always wanted to beat Penn State, but you were recruited by Penn State, correct? Um, Not heavily. I went to one of their camps, Um, but I committed pretty early. I committed uh, 11th grade. Like, right when I started winning a lot, I committed right away. So a lot of teams couldn't reach me. So, like, I'm super loyal. So once I gave Arizona State my, world, my word, uh, 
I was supposed to go to Ohio State the next week, and then I was like, no. I was like, I'm coming here. I gave them my word. I'm done with any other visits. So, yeah. Wow. You, you mentioned how, all right, so Penn State is who they are, right? And mm-hmm. you're at ASU. You love mm-hmm. it there. Made a decision. Mm-hmm. And as a wrestler now, with everything going on, with like NIL deals, the world is changing. Mm-hmm. What is your opinion or um, what do you think of the, the future of collegiate wrestling? Oh, it's definitely growing. It's, I feel like people, even like ball players, let's say you talk about ball players because they get the most NIL, right? I feel like LeBron, if LeBron could have went to college first and NIL was there, I feel like he would have did that. Yeah. Possibly. I feel like it's very possible he would have did that. I feel like he just wanted money and college couldn't give him that, obviously. So I feel like he jumped to league right away. So I feel like the NIL is making a big difference and a lot of kids want to succeed and go to college and be this big name in college to get the money. And I feel like that gives people more motivation and matches in any sport, in all the sports. Because if you're winning, you're obviously getting more followers. And the more followers you have, the bigger your, your NIL deals could be, you know? Because it's all based on social media too. Like if you have a good social media. So I feel like the college students just love the NIL for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, because you, you, it's a monetary game, right? But mm-hmm. at the same time, you mentioned that you finished your undergrad already. You're working on your yep. math. So with the money mm-hmm. rolling in and the opportunities, how do you stay focused? Because that's not easy. It, it really isn't. Because mm-hmm. you mentioned how LeBron had the opportunity to go to school and they had NIL deals. He probably would have done that. Mm-hmm. But now you're in the midst of it all. NIL deals are prevalent. Mm-hmm. How do you stay focused academically? Obviously, getting the master's, you got to be... You got to stay focused, but um, I feel like the money in the school goes hand in hand. If you're obviously not doing your schoolwork, you're either going to flunk out. <laughs> you're going to flunk out and you're not even going to get the chance to get the money, you know? So obviously the schoolwork comes first. Schoolworks come first. Then I feel like your sports should come second. Then the NIL comes after that. Because if you're not doing good in school, you're obviously not going to be able to be eligible to just play the sport. So if you you do this you do the schoolwork right, then you get your results that you want in the sport. And then your NIL will be big, you know. So it's like just knowing your priorities, you can't. The money will be there, but you got to take care of the things that's more important first. Yeah. And you're scheduled to um, complete your graduate degree when? Do you know when? Or you're just taking class by class? Mm-hmm. Class by class right now. Yeah. I start right. next semester right now. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Congratulations yeah. on all your success, man. Like, I'm hey. as a family member, cousin, man. He was proud, mm-hmm. proud of you. And mm-hmm. the motivation, just seeing you do certain things motivates us all, man. Real mm-hmm. talk. I know you hear that a lot, but don't mm-hmm. ever take that for granted, man, because sure. it's a beautiful thing to watch, man. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate your time. Anything else you want to share with the people, your Instagram, socials, your your yeah. next moves, whatever uh, it is, man. Yeah, Final- no, I, got, I got some NIL stuff coming up. So it'll be on my socials, Jacory underscore Ben Trill on Instagram. I don't really use any other socials other than that. Right, you already man. know, Teamer, Teamer Boys rule. You already know that, man. Proud right. of your family, man. Yeah. Go out there. Keep doing your thing, man. We appreciate yeah. you, man. And uh, mm-hmm. thanks for your time, man. Yeah, we're going to hop back on here mid-season or something. Get oh, you already know life. that, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I just don't want to, you know. Just too much of your time. I know you focus, man. I just want to see yeah. all those things that you mentioned come to fruition. And I, mm-hmm. I'm willing to bet on it. It's going to happen because you that guy. Sure. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you, dog. We good. Love.